Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Stride MQTT Gateway Click PLC Modbus RTU TCP. Now the first thing we'll do is look at, um, we are, will be connected to our public MQTT broker, which is online um, at Hive MQ, and they have a public MQTT broker that we'll be using. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video one. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So if we look at our public MQTT broker, we will look at our settings that we need to put on our host, which is our broker.hivemq.com. And it's using TCP port 1883, and WebSocket port of 18 or 8,000. So that's our settings that we'll need to put into our, our units. Now, the next thing we'll do is take a look at our um, uh, actual physical hardware that we have connected here. And as you can see from last time, we have our Stride um, MQTT gateway. We are connected via RS-45 to our solo process temperature controller. Then we are connected th uh, through our um, Ethernet cable, Modbus TCP, over to our Click PLC through our Ethernet port. And we also use this port for our programming on our stride and there's our power supply that we use to power up our Stride MQT key gateway. So once we have that set, let's take a look quickly at our actual uh, uh, programming now. And here is our web browser and we go over to our default IP address, which is 192.168.1100. And there's our administration uh, username and we'll type in our password that we changed last time ACC automation and we'll log in and once we've logged in we'll just check our network interface and here we go if we scroll down you'll see that we have our address our sub subnet mask we have our gateway we also have our preferred DNS and our alternative DNS, which is set for our Google ones. And we can test our internet connection and the internet uh, connection is available. So that's all good. So we'll close that down. And then we'll look at our uh, MQTT and we're set to our broker.hivemq.com, which is the same one that we see on our public broker. So everything looks good there. So let's go over to our channels and you see that we've added an additional channel before we had our, our channel one, which is our Modbus RTU going to our solo. Now we're going to be looking at channel two, which is our Modbus TCP. This is going to our click PLC. So let's open that up. See channel two. We have our Modbus TCP. We have our IP address here of 192.168.1.130 and it's default in the port 502 and we've left the, the rest the remain the same now in order to get that ip address this is the ip address of the click plc itself so let's call up our click software which is right here if we go to um, setup system configuration There's my system current system configuration. If we double click on the port setup, and again, this is port number one, you see it's set manually and we've set it for 192.168.1.130. And that's how we get our actual IP address for our click. Just hit okay. Or I right, cancel there, cancel that. So going back to our channel 2 so that's how we get our unit value so let's uh, close that down then we go over to devices 
and under the click now which is coming from channel 2 we click on it we have our name and our channel number which is the Modbus TCP connection our unit address is 1 and the first thing we do is we are going to turn on C1 so let's just take a look at um, or edit that one and it's a one bit format label variable C1 our address is 16384 now how we got that was again let's refer back to our click PLC we'll look at our address picker and under our address picker if we go to the C memory and C1 is the one we want here and we'll hit the display Modbus address so that's listed as 16385 and our gateway is actually taking that value and subtracting one from it so that's how we get 16384 so I cancel out that and we'll go back again to MQT gateway programming so that's how we get it there. Now another way of getting that address is if we look at the manual for the MQTT itself, which is here, we can download the complete manual. And under the appendix B, what we will find is that uh, we have the addresses for the Click PLC, the, the Direct Logic PLCs, the Do More, and the Proactivity series. So scrolling down is our as our uh, click PLCs. So here we're looking for C1 and C1 is 16384 just as we um, had described. And while we're here we're going to also use DS1 and we will look at that one. DS1 here is address 0. So that's our two addresses that we're going to pick up from our click. So let's go back to our programming. Here we go. So there's our address. Our function code for reading that bit, C1, is going to be 01, read coil status. And our function is going to be 05, single or four single coil. So we're going to turn on a, the, the coil itself to fire that on that PLC. So let's close that down. And what you see is we have it selected and we've called the topic click slash C1. And it's going to publish this every time there's a change to that variable. Then to set the variable, we'll, we're going to put click set C1. And that will use that function code to actually write to that C1 variable. Next, we're going to use DS1. So let's look at it in DS1. It's a 16-bit integer, unsigned. Our variable name, DS1. Our address, again, that we looked up previously, is 0. Our function code to read is going to be 03, read holding registers. And our function code to write is 06, is our preset single register. And these are the function codes for Modbus. So once we have that set, then we can select this and we can uh, put in our variables, so our public or publish would be click slash DS1 and we're going to publish that on a change of value and our topic it was going to be click set DS1 so this is when we're going to actually write something in so that is our two um, that's our devices and the click PLC and then we have again we already looked at our MQTT and our connection to that. Now the green dot indicates that we actually have a connection and everything is communicating well. Under devices, you'll see that the click has um, a green dot and a solo has a green dot. So again, we are communicating from our stride uh, MQTT gateway to our click with Modbus TCP and our stride to Modbus RTU to our solo. So last thing we can do is we can go like go to the three double dots and hit uh, import export configuration and we'll export that configuration. And when we do, it just comes up and it says it exported. So now that's saved that export file 
to our download section in our computer. So then we can log out. So now our programming for our MQTT gateway has been completed. So let's turn that, turn it off there. And now what we'll do is we will call up our um, client to actually communicate. And I found it, this interesting program called MQTT Box. And it is a MQTT client that we can use to uh, monitor what's happening and control what's happening in our system. So we download this for our uh, Windows application. And we can click on the Windows. And if we had Windows 10, then we click on this. If we don't, we just download it using this one here, our exe file. And it will actually pop up now with our software. So our software looks like this. And the first thing you'll notice is that we've already pre-programmed our, our MQTT gateway, which is coming from our MQTT broker.hivemq.com. And you see that we are connected. Clicking in that, you can see here we can publish and we can subscribe to different topics. So let's describe, subscribe to our DS1. Here we go. So it's going to actually populate this as we go along. And this is our uh, click set C1 and our payload. We're going to change the payload to one. And when we do, we will take a look at our program on our click which is right here, we've set up a drum counter, which will then cycle our outputs on and off through a different pattern and off of C1. And then when C1 goes off, um, it'll come off. And our current step is gonna be DS1, which is what we subscribe to. So we'll see the steps as they go along. And we are in run mode and we're online with our click. So here we go and we'll publish that. Once we do, you'll see that now my va my values here on my click, my outputs are now cycling according to my um, according to what I did with my program on my drum sequencer. And you can see here that as I subscribe, as the values change, they are actually changing values here. If I put a zero in there. You'll see that now my program has stopped and my output's no longer cycling. So if we look at our click and we can look at our um, operations here, you'll see here's my where it stopped as DS10 and which corresponds to the value of DS10 right here. So there we go. So everything works exactly as we expected it. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday. So make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.